Good morning. A very warm welcome to a fresh episode of Policy Square, jointly hosted by Primus Partners in support with Business World, with an aim to bring the new and innovative thoughts from the thought leaders, both in administration and in the politics, to share their views and the initiatives that they have undertaken with the broader uh, uh, audience in the nation. In our latest episode, we have the honor of being joined by a young, vibrant, and dynamic Indian politician who is currently a member of the 17th Lok Sabha, uh, Shri Lavu Shri Krishna, who has previously served as the Human Resource Development Standing Committee and since 2021 has been an active participant on various committees, including the Committee on Public Undertakings, Committee on Education, Women, Child, Youth and Sports, and Consultative Committee on Animal Husbandry, Dairy and Fisheries. In 2022, he was appointed as a member of the Joint Committee on Multi-State Cooperative Societies Bill 2022. He is widely recognized for his fervent advocacy on behalf of the people of Andhra Pradesh and Palnadu district and his proactive engagement in the parliament affairs uh, with a particular emphasis on education. So we are very honored to have you sir, here today with us. If you look at uh, one of the mandates of the national education policy, which talks about 100% gross enrollment ratio. Now, one of the observations we have seen is that at the early uh, part of uh, the education uh, life of a child, you know, the gross enrollment ratio is quite high. But as they progress towards uh, high school and then uh, higher education, the enrollment drops, which is also a function of sometimes the demography as well. Uh, so what, what exactly is the state doing in, in terms of ensuring that there is a continuity of the child's education through the later stages? It's the drop uh, percentage is not only just with, uh, with, with our country, but it actually happens with all the modern, you know, the adult countries mm -hmm. as well, you know, while, you know, after 12th and everything. But coming to a state of Andhra Pradesh, what Andhra Pradesh is doing, as I, as I was earlier mentioning, um, making to make sure that this drop actually doesn't happen, uh, at least up to, up to the school level, we are running a program called Amavadi. Hmm. Amavadi is where uh, a student, a parent will be given 15,000 rupees if the student actually comes to the school. So, so the money is directly given to the in, into the mother's account. So either one child or two child, but the amount will be 15,000. Hmm. It will be given to the mother's account. The, so that, you know, they answer. don't have the temptation. If you, you've seen in that during the time of COVID, there was a temptation that this is not something I can afford where I can take boy or girl to work and earn uh, some more uh, money. So the temptation will be taken out um, by giving this money so that uh, he or uh, the boy, boy the, the child can actually come to the school and uh, come to the school um, not uh, you know not in a way that he is not uh, uh, fed well but actually fed well because the 15000 will be helpful in that way so that is one thing that uh, we are doing so that the uh, child is not missing the uh, classes or dropping out mm -hmm. the second one that we are doing is after 12th this is up until uh, 12th but after 12th, uh, once he finishes that, the main uh, scheme that we have been uh, running for the last almost 15 years uh, in Andhra Pradesh and even in Telangana, because Rashi Kritikar was there, uh, Chief Minister of this, both the states. So uh, even in Telangana was that, uh, as I was mentioning, fees reimbursement mm -hmm. so that the student who wants to study continues his or studies after higher, 12, education. higher education, wherever you study, the fees is being paid by the government. So there's a big push in that direction, uh, so that student doesn't drop out, uh, and a parent doesn't, you know, think of, you know, uh, taking uh, the child out of the school or the college just because uh, the resources are not there. So these are the big push that uh, Andhra Pradesh government is doing. Wonderful, yeah. So one more question uh, with respect to the quality of the teaching uh, staff also, and NEP talks about it, and you also just mentioned in terms of improving the quality of the teaching staff. Uh, but there's also a lot of uh, push in the state about uh, introducing English at the early stages, especially to prepare the child for a global platform. But at the same time, there is also talk about, uh, you know, introducing the child to regional languages as NEP talks about it. So how, how is that balance 
uh, that the state is uh, looking to play out both are very important you know learning the uh, english language uh, and also your mother tongue uh, because most importantly when you look at the a student in a government school um, early learning most of the early learning happens in your mother tongue absolutely because uh, 50 50% of the learning happens in the school but actual uh, another 50% act, actually happens with the people that you interact so people th- that you interact when you go back uh, is always in the mother tongue mm-hmm. so we cannot completely It's either or mm-hmm. either or or it has to be blended both of them must be blended so that's what nep is talking that Absolutely. it has to be blended so there is a uh, you know push from the parents that um, you know that at, at least in state of andhra pradesh that uh, uh, any child um, should be you know taught in english from the very early early young age and everything that's been, that's been the uh, push because that's the because they've seen in the in, if in the villages that are uh, whoever has studied really well they've gone overseas or going going to big mm-hmm. cities uh, they see the main reason being that they studied in a private english medium school that's the difference that this that, that think this that is happening but my personal belief is that it has to be blended it can't be just uh, either or or so uh, that's what we, we're trying to do in andhra pradesh that uh, yes english we try making sure that a parent understands that english in, is important but at the same time a parent is also understanding that uh, there's a lot of value in actually doing the early education in telugu because what happens is whatever he learns in school if he has to go back home and has to practice with the parent parent also need to learn that language yeah. if he has to sit with the parent and has to have a conversation this is what i learned and you know this is please help me or something like that parent also has to learn has to you know in in that language otherwise uh, there'll be a lot of uh, uh, divide in that whole uh, a uh, learning process that happens so yes there's a push from uh, government of andhra pradesh to un- make sure that a parent understands that english is important but also there's a belief by uh, by from the government of andhra pradesh that uh, telugu is equally important that's what we try to do blending it not just either or or so true to its image andhra pradesh has always been a thought leadership and a trail blazer in anything it does education being one of them today you did talk about how Uh, laying the foundation with a very strong physical infrastructure for school is concerned uh, the quality of uh, education digitization as well as preparing the student for future skills and future employment is something that andhra pradesh is looking at uh, very very seriously there's a lot of lesson that we have learned today and of course the rest of the nation would also learn so i want to really thank you for spending time with us and sharing your uh, perspective with us Thank you thank you Sandhi and the uh, panelists team uh, for having me um yes uh, this is this has been the one of the major initiatives uh, not just in andhra pradesh but all these uh, progressive states are actually looking at education as the key uh, development issue when they're going for the polls so th- this is what I've, any guy, any cm is trying to portray this is what i have done in the last 5 years in the forefront of education so i hope uh the country as a whole will take this as a initiative because uh, to implement nep uh, the budgets that we should be requiring is around 6% of the gdp and um i think i i hope in the coming years there will be a big push on the union government as well to increase the budgets not just uh, uh, putting all the bur- all the burden on the state governments and just giving a vision document like nep and asking them to forcing them to implement it rather than just putting it to them i hope uh, uh, both of uh, both the state and collaborate uh, state and union comes together and actually chip in this amount of money otherwise uh, as a non jack economy that uh, we are going to go in the next uh, few years and uh, also with the young population that we have i think that's uh, that's where we should be investing i hope we will be investing there thank you very much thank you so much sir.